Hey, this is Ben again, and we are at the Google I.O. After Hours Party. We've got amazing things to see here. Let me find my uh, collaborator here. Hey. Hey, Ben. How was that? That was <laughs> great. This is a Virtusphere. It's virtual reality in a sphere, and they've got two of them. And people are going to be going head-to-head -head combat here at the After Hours Party for Google. Fantastic. There's a bunch of other crazy robotic things that we're going to show you tonight. What else do we have? Uh, brainwave games that read your brain and lets you do amazing things. We've got a 38-foot mechanical snake. And we've got a bunch of uh, autonomous flying helicopters that do amazing things. Build things, play ping pong. Yes. It's pretty incredible. So yeah. we're looking forward to showing you guys around to see what we can't find to share with you that's happening here at Google I.O. after hours. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. We're All right. there. We're over here <laughs> now with what looks like a giant snake. Can you tell us what your name is? Yeah, my name is Charlie Brinson, and I'm the initiator of this project. The project's called Titanoboa, and it's a massive uh, recreation of this ancient snake that used to exist 60 million years ago. And just how big is this snake? Right now, this one is about 40 feet long, but we plan to, uh, it's still in the process of growing, so we're going to lengthen it to 50 feet to represent the original kind of beast that was roaming the earth. Now, now when you say this project, who, who is this group that you're in charge of here? So I'm the initiator of the project and we have uh, a team of about 15 or 20 people. We're all working under the support of a foundation called EDART, which is energy awareness through art. And we build huge kinetic sculptures that have energy related themes to them. What, what is the energy related theme for this sculpture? Well, we figure since the story goes that Titanobo went extinct 60 million years ago because the climate cooled down, right? So now the climate's warming back up, so we're resurrecting this this, this beast to uh, kind of get discussions going about climate change and showcase uh, electric vehicle technology. It, what, what kind of locomotion is this? Is this like this actually move like a snake? Yeah, so there's, you can see all down the spine there's all these hydraulic cylinders which are muscles uh, of the snake and they kind of just contract in such a way that it enables it to propel itself. It's all, it's all controlled by a series of microcontroller brains all down the spine and um, controlled wirelessly from the driver. And, and how fast is, how fast does it go? Should we be concerned? Uh, yeah, it, sometimes it gets a little bit of a little bit of a temper going, and it can lash out its tail. But uh, this, well, this you could probably outrun it pretty easily. So, at least at this stage, we're planning on modifying it and upgrading it so that it can really <laughs> cruise. Are, are any of the attendees here going to get a chance to drive this thing, or is it experts only? It's a, there's a pretty big learning curve. So because of the because it can flick its tail out and stuff, it's pretty. It's kind of you got to go through a rigorous training program before you can actually get behind the. the so excellent. other people out there are interested in building really awesome stuff like this. What, what's your advice for them? Uh, just do it. Like um, we, I had this idea, and we had no idea whether it was going to be possible, but we just kind of persevered. And at times, it looked really like, what are we doing? But you know, when, once you get to the end, and you got your, your product that it looks really awesome, it's just it's the best feeling ever. So. Wonder, where, where can people see this if they want to see it in person outside of the show? Is it going to be in a museum or uh, an exhibit? Can, or take it to various exhibits, you know, um, like around like maybe five or six different major exhibits throughout the year. So uh, you, could, you can look it up online at titanaboa.ca and, uh, and then we'll have posts like where our next kind of show is. Yeah. Titanoboa.ca. We want to awesome. learn more about that. All right, so that's Wonderful. Titanoboa, and we're going to move on and see what else we can find around here to show you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Thank you. It. No Love your attire, by the way. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> coat you've got there, I have to say. It looks very distinguished. Styling. Excellent. All right, let's roll. Okay, we're over here uh, with something incredible. I think we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> no, so what's your name? Christian Risto. And Christian, tell us a little bit about what we're standing in front of and are we in danger? You are not actually in danger. Okay. It might be fun to think you are, but uh, I have other pieces that would endanger you more than this one is. Um, this piece is called Face Forward, uh, and it's a 12-foot tall animatronic human face made from aluminum and stainless steel. Uh, it's radio controlled. Um, there are 12 points of control on the face that correspond to different um, elements of human facial expression, uh, and each of those control points is controlled from a control station um, and they're spaced and arranged in such a way that uh, one person can really only operate one at a time so the idea is that it takes 12 people to bring the piece to life can, can you can you tell us what inspired you to build this um, 
basically, I started getting, uh, at some point, very interested in the idea of human facial expression and the musculature associated with it. Um, and uh, because it's fascinating. We have this amazingly sensitive, expressive musculature in our face, which is devoted to one thing and one thing only, and that's communication with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and it functions in ways that are more subtle and intricate than we realize. And we can, you know, even occasionally express things to other people that we don't really mean to. And so it's, it's just fascinating, and I really wanted to uh, build a piece that um, captured that somehow. And then, uh, almost as an afterthought, I came up with this idea of um, spreading out the controls and making it something that would require 12 people to really bring to life. And there's an element of an experiment in uh, cooperation uh, built into the piece. Um, there's, uh, there's, this, there's a degree to which I have always hoped that um, spontaneous uh, cooperation would emerge among groups of people and certain people would perhaps uh, take on the role of leader like okay everybody let's do anger right. um, and so uh, you know I have really wanted to watch the, the groups of people controlling the face and wait and see if something like that would happen it has happened it has happened much less frequently than I thought it might it's fantastic I, the, the whole idea of emergent collaboration is something that's very uh, very near near yes. dear to our heart, in fact. So, yeah. um, it's fa fascinating. So, stuff. so where can I where can we go see this? Is this on permanent display somewhere? Do you travel around with it, or uh, I do travel around with it. It's not on permanent display. It usually goes back home to my ranch in northern New Mexico between shows. Um, it will be, however, at uh, an event called Artscape, which is a large scale outdoor public art festival in Baltimore uh, in late July, July 20, 21, 22. Great. Um, it will probably be at the Voodoo Fest, which is a music festival in New Orleans, right on Halloween. And it might show up at Maker Fair New York. I'm not sure yet. Fantastic. Well, listen, well, thanks a lot for taking the time to show it. So, so you have a great time tonight. I think so Googlers, All right. Googlers are going to have a great time with this tonight. Yeah. Let's Thank move you. on to the next guy. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Holy smokes. Where we are, are we now? We are inside the giant cage with some flying robots. Can, hi, so what's your name? It's uh, Raffaello D'Andrea. And where are you from and what exactly is going on here? Uh, I'm a professor at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. And uh, what you're seeing here is a demonstration of multi-vehicle uh, control. These uh, flying vehicles are uh, collaborating to throw a ball up in the air and then collaborating to move and catch it. They're really good. Yeah, they're quite good at it. There's no way that you could have human beings control these vehicles to do this. Uh, they're fully autonomous. They're not uh, radio remote controlled. Uh, by human beings, um, and the precision required to do this uh, is not achievable with people. It has to be done autonomously with uh, sophisticated algorithms. Are they are they actually tracking the ball as it falls back down to they, the ground? They are. The vehicles themselves are not. We have a, um, uh, because we're indoors here, we have an indoor GPS system, which is the equivalent of GPS outside, uh, and that is what we're using to track the vehicles. Uh, the ball is being tracked as it flies, and then the vehicles figure out exactly where they need to be to intercept it. That is amazing. Absolutely and, and, amazing. And so, how, how big is your team? So, we, we have a rather large team uh, here. We have about six people here. Uh, we have another uh, ten folks back home. We do research on autonomous systems, not just flying vehicles. Uh, so, it, it's a you know, team of about 15 people. And, and now for the real question. How many of these things have you destroyed in <laughs> learning all this? Right. So. Um, these things are actually quite robust. They, a lot of times we fly them, they bounce on the ground and they get back up, but we've probably gone through you know, 10, 20 vehicles. Are, are people who are watching this at home, uh, are they our developers, are they able to play with autonomous systems like this? Are there kits they can buy or things? Yeah, there are. Uh, so, uh, I mean, to do this level of autonomy is, is beyond, um, you know, this is yes. uh, cutting edge research that sure. we're doing. However, you can buy kits uh, for flying vehicles, rather inexpensive now. Um, and uh, if you're willing to do things with a remote control, uh, human piloted, uh, right now it's very difficult to have fully autonomous systems, but you know, give it another two or three years. I was thinking about things like XB, point-to-point -point communication of small robot insects. I've seen things like that and wondering if that's something people can play with at home, if it's a similar sort of problem. Um, the big difference with the flying vehicles, of course, is that they're unstable, and if something goes wrong, they will crash. So, right. yes, I, I, that's great advice for any hobbyist. First start with vehicles on the ground, so yeah. if something goes wrong, they just kind of stay put, or, you know, at worst, they drive away from you. But, I mean, 
five years ago, we wouldn't even have been able to come close to what we're doing now. So every year, more capabilities are you know coming around the corner. And I see you've got blocks over here on a platform. So these are the robots. We've seen awesome videos in the web, and they're building things. Is that That's right? That's correct. So uh, this is just one. What you saw right now is just one of the about 10 demos that we're going to demonstrate tonight. Uh, one of the other demos is we're going to build a tower with our flying vehicles. Um, and uh, we're going to play cooperative ping pong. Uh, we are going to balance sticks. We're going to learn how to do triple flips. Uh, we're going to do some slalom. Uh, what else are we going to do? Uh, we're going to do a choreographed uh, dance to music. Um, yeah, this we're going to do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Really, okay. really fun. This is officially amazing. We're going to have to move on and touch yes. some other robots, okay, but Thank thanks you for, for your time right. and have a great night. All right. See Bye. You. Thank you very All much. Bye-bye. Right. All right. Hey, hello again. Here we are at another station. And uh, what is your name? My name is Gil Weinberg. And uh, what are you doing here for us today? Uh, we developed robotic docking station. We believe that every part uh, of your house should become robotic, and we want to try with a docking station. So we think that a docking station that's not only playing your music, but actually enjoying the music as much as you do, would be a nice way to start. So you've designed a docking station that enjoys music. We try to have it dance and enjoy music and be your companion. So it can recommend music to you. It can tell you what he thinks about your taste. If he doesn't like what you like, he can have a gesture or sound. Something that you can interact with, learn about music, and enjoy music more when you listen to it. That sounds like what Fitz does with me all the time. <laughs> <What do> you... <laughs> This sounds amazing. Can we get it? Can we take a look at it? Can we yeah, give so, a little demo so, here? So one quick demo would be me trying to clap a song, and it goes through the cloud. Try to find the song that is matching my clapping, and let's see if it. Uh, okay, works. we got a lot of noise. All right. Let's see what it does. Okay. You're gonna clap a tempo. Yeah. Uh, we don't have sound. Too much. This is the song that we found. It's Try boogieing. Again. Try it again. Try it again? Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. One more time. Well, that was the rhythm that I wanted. It's the same beat. Yeah, it yeah. The beat, it detects uh, the tempo and brings you songs that uh, fits. So it detects the beat and the tempo and it finds something in the cloud and it starts playing. Right, right. And another demo that I want to show you is uh, we have all the robots uh, dancing together. So, so they synchronize. Yeah, what's nice about it is that all the brain of the robot is on the phone. So it has the, all the computation, the networking, uh, the audio input, the vision. When you move, the robot also always knows where you are, so you're always in the center of the stereo field. So it's just like a, it's a, it's a peripheral, basically, for your phone. Basically, basically. And it's, tra it's tracking you, you said, as, as, you, as you walk because around? Because you have a phone here. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of capabilities and that makes this robot pretty cheap. This can be a $100 sure. robot. Uh, wow. And all the brain is pretty much in your pocket. When you take the brain from the pocket and put it in the dock, suddenly the robot becomes smart. It can communicate, it can network with each other, it can look at you and always be at the center, uh, you're always in the center of can, the stereo field. Can these coordinate for us? Yeah, these coordinate. Uh, Mason, you want to try to make them coordinate? All right, sure let's we, give it a yeah, try and try to make them time. coordinate. All right. Let's watch. So how do we do that? Uh, so we just started. There they go, okay. I see there's two of them going. And there's the middle one. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so if I really wanted, if I wanted to buy one of these, can I go buy one today at the store? We hope to make them affordable. As I mentioned, this can be a hundred dollar robot. We want to have it ready by January of 2013. Uh, what's nice about it is that it can use sounds that it makes by itself, or sounds from your music library. In this case, as you hear right now, it actually synthesizes in real time based on the gestures. The gestures actually generate a sound. Okay. Wonderful. And this is programmable, I assume? This is programmable. We want to have it an uh, uh, application for kids, for education, Fantastic. gaming. Uh, there will be an API. And I think just now they're about to play together, so maybe we can finish with a little uh, song that they all play together. Here. Thank you so all right, much. Thanks. So for all you engineers out there who don't want to dance like me, you got something to dance for you. Let's move on <laughs> see if there's anything else to see. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.